once the school year was started, I made it a point to tour the various buildings. I toured them earlier when they were empty, touring them with kids in them and principals and teachers in them. An entirely different scene. Unfortunately, the impressions were not much different in the schools touring them than they had been when with kids touring them with kids and teachers than I had gotten the impressions when I toured them when they were empty. The high school definitely did not measure up to the quality of the other schools. Highland, Coffeen, Taylor, the junior high, can't think of uh, Bruce Pride's school's name right now, but they all measured up very, very well. And I was particularly impressed with Mrs. Hills and her staff in the new Coffeen building because they were the school that was ready, willing, eager to go into some of the more modern teaching practices. I was just as disappointed with the appearance at the high school when it had kids and teachers in it as when I saw it empty. It just did not reflect a place of comfort, a place of pride. Some classrooms, yes, but overall, not clean, not sharp, not a good spirit to be felt, and not a good teaching environment. However, the worst of all was to go into a classroom and find a group of kids quite busy. No noise as we walked up to the room, no noise in the room when we were there. But no teacher. No teacher at all. Well, I think I knew, maybe because I had a building plan, maybe I had a guide, I can't remember, that this was Coach Detai's classroom. So I asked, where is the coach? One of the boys spoke up, said he's over in the gym. He's always in the gym. He never stays in the classroom. Oh, what's going on in the gym? Well, he works on football equipment and stuff like that. Well, when I finished the regular tour, headed for the gym, and sure enough, Mr. Detai, Coach Detai, is over there. And uh, when I expressed some concern, he said, well, weren't my kids busy? Oh, yes, they were busy. He said, they better be. I said, that's not sufficient. You are, first of all, a teacher, second, a coach. And you must be in the classroom when you have students there. No, he said, you don't understand. I wasn't hired to teach. I've been hired to win football games. Well, I said, I don't doubt that. I think I said it. But you still are, first of all, a teacher, and you have to be in the classroom. Well, I could tell he didn't agree with that and didn't think it was necessary. You know, I never met his father. But, but I'll bet you one thing for sure, that his dad put the classroom first, and if he was out of that classroom, he had somebody covering it. Because that was the other thing I asked. Is anybody looking in on you? No. No, the kid said. Violation, I think, of all the things that you're taught when you take any teacher education coaching program anywhere, that your first duty is safety of the students, and there's no way on earth you can totally guarantee that you've done the most you can for the safety of students if you aren't in that classroom. Of course, there are times you have to step out of a classroom. I've done it. I don't expect anybody else can say that there was never a time they didn't step out. But I never stepped out without asking another teacher to cover by looking in and keeping an ear until I got back. Coach Tita didn't see any sense to that at all.